Hello, my name is Dr. Joshua Richter. I'm an associate professor of medicine at the Tisch Cancer Institute, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. And I'm very pleased to present our collaborative work uh, regarding sevastamab in patients with heavily pretreated relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma, updated results from the ongoing phase one study demonstrating clinically meaningful activity and manageable safety and informing dosing of regimen for combination studies. So uh, the world of relapse and refractory myeloma is changing very, very quickly. Uh, we've been talking about the concept of triple class refractory myeloma, myeloma that's refractory to an IMID, a proteasome inhibitor, and a CD38 monoclonal antibody. However, with the recently approved CAR-Ts and bispecific antibodies, we are now having patients progressing beyond even the BCMA and the GPRC5D assets in both CAR-T and bispecific form. Therefore, we're in dire need of regimens and targets to utilize uh, even in patients who've gone beyond these types of therapies. Uh, here, we're just going to be discussing the sevastamab data. Sevastamab is an FCRH5 CD3 bispecific antibody, and this is the updated data from the phase one study. Now, this patient did allow prior BCMA and GPRC5D, but as the study has been going on for a number of years now, there have been more patients with these assets more recently, as some of these drugs have only been FDA approved and approved in other countries within the last few years. So this is the overall schema of the G039775 study. This is for patients with relapse and refractory myeloma uh, with no established standard of care therapies, uh, and patients were allowed to have prior CAR-T, ADC, or bispecific antibodies. The drug was given uh, every three weeks after an initial step-up dose for a total of 17 cycles, which equated to approximately one year of therapy, at which point patients were stopped if they were still on therapy at that time, observed off of treatment, and had the option to go back on sevastamab if they had relapsed subsequent to that. Now, there have been a number of approaches to optimize both safety and efficacy, and we can see that at this time, over 300 patients have been enrolled across a variety of cohorts, including single step up, double step up, and even triple step up with a variety of different targets. Ultimately, uh, we've come to the conclusion that the 160 milligram is the recommended phase two dose. However, we know that there have been about 167 patients who've been treated at the target dose of 160 milligrams across a variety of different subcohorts, ranging from single step up to triple step up. However, there are a total of 30 patients who received the target dose of 160 milligrams after receiving the triple step up dose, which is really gonna be the strategy moving forward, going from 0 0.3 to 1.2 to 3.6, and ultimately the 160 milligram dosing cohort. So we're gonna go through the data, which some of which applies to the entire 167 patients received the 160 milligram dose, but some of the data is specifically focusing on the 30 patients at not only the target dose, but the target step-up dosing strategy. Now again, these patients are extremely heavily pretreated. Uh, we see that the patients have had an average of six, and if looking at the 30 patients with the triple step up, a median of seven and a half prior lines of therapy. And if we think about the modern way that myeloma is treated using quadruplets up front, regimens like DARA RVD, we have to imagine that patients who've had seven plus lines of therapy of modern day myeloma treatment are extremely refractory patients. All patients are triple class refractory. Many of them, the overwhelming majority, are penta drug refractory, refractory to Rev, POM, Velcate, Carfilzomib, and Daratumumab, with many of these patients being BCMA refractory, and additionally some of them being GPRC5D refractory, and again, refractory to CAR-Ts, bispecific antibodies, as well as antibody drug conjugates like belantamab, mafodotin. Uh, across the 167 patients, we see the ultimate dispositions here, with ultimately many of the patients uh, eventually having progressive disease, uh, and at the current time, we have no patients receiving ongoing active therapy. We look here at the adverse events, and in general, uh, the majority of the adverse events were grade one, grade two, and well tolerated. There are a couple of notes uh, regarding hematologic toxicity. Um, we do notice hematologic toxicity, as with any drug in the myeloma space, with the more advanced AEs being neutropenia and leukopenia. However, of note, some of the AEs of special interest, anytime we're utilizing a T-cell redirection therapy, are going to be things like cytokine release syndrome and icons. 
Um, and overall, if we look uh, at the rate of uh, CRS, we do know that it's appreciable. Uh, and in line with many of other therapies, I'm going to show you in a few minutes uh, the data for uh, the triple step-up dosing cohorts, where essentially all of the CRS is grade one and grade two. Uh, when it comes to infections, which has been a major issue in the realm of T-cell redirection therapy, we see that many patients have had infections, a little over half, uh, with the overwhelming majority of these infections being grade one and grade two. There have been a few grade uh, three and higher infectious complications, with, uh, as to be expected, the majority of the infections being uh, pulmonary-based with pneumonia, an upper respiratory tract infection. Uh, although we don't have ideal head-to-head -head data, it seems that BCMA-based uh, uh, T-cell redirection therapy has the most infectious complications, then likely FCRH5, and then GPRC5D. When we dig down a little granularly into the 30 patients who receive the cohort dosing with triple step-up, we can see the pattern of CRS. Um, about 30% uh, of patients did have uh, sorry, of the 30 patients, about 63% of them had CRS, all of which was grade one and grade two. There was no grade three or higher CRS seen in the patients uh, in this cohort. With the majority of the CRS uh, occurring, or about half of it occurring, when patients received the cohort dose of 160 milligrams. Uh, this was treated per institution protocol with a number of patients receiving either tocilizumab, steroids, or both. When it comes to overall response rate, if we look across the entire group uh, of 167 patients treated at the cohort dose, there was a 44.3% response rate. However, when we look to patients without prior BCMA therapy, this is more in line with what we've seen with other monotherapy in the bispecific world at around 60.6%. Median time to first response is around 1.4 months, and a number of these patients achieving MRD negativity. We did note that duration of response correlated with the depth of response. So uh, patients had a median duration of response of around 10 months if they had a PR or better. But for those patients achieving a VGPR or better, they enjoyed a DOR of over 21 months. Now we can look at the swimmers plot, and we have a number of patients who have completed 17 cycles, with a large number of them actually in continued remission off of therapy despite being heavily pretreated. What seems to be one of the biggest predictors of being able to maintain remission off of therapy is the achievement of a stringent CR or better at the time of completion of the 17 cycles. In conclusion, FCRH5 is a novel target, which is uh, in clinical development for the treatment of relapsed and refractory myeloma, uh, and there's a very much manageable safety toxicity with a lot of the AEs in line with what we've seen with other T-cell redirection therapy. The majority of the grade 3, 4 AEs were cytopenias and were reversible. The grade 3 or higher infection rate was only 19%. This has been over 50% in some of the BCMA bispecifics. The majority of the CRS was grade one with uh, no grade three or higher CRS seen in the triple step up dosing. Uh, we see an overall response rate of 44.3%. However, this is just over 60% in patients without prior BCMA therapy. Uh, increase in response duration with depth of response with a number of patients being able to maintain response off of treatment, especially those who achieve the stringency are better. At this time, uh, we're moving forward with the triple step up dose uh, from 0.3 to 1.2 to 3.6, and ultimately the 160 milligram triple step-up dosing. Uh, and as this current uh, strategy has been employing, employing a 12-month duration of treatment, this is a way to get some of our later stage patients off of long-term therapy if we achieve deep enough responses. And with that, uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank the patients, their families and caregivers, as well as all of the study investigators, the study coordinators and nurses, and the sponsor Genentech for allowing us to care for these patients. Thank you very much for listening.